Okay, let's unpack this. Imagine for a moment you're looking up at the night sky, feeling small, maybe, but uh, connected to all that vastness out there. Now picture an object like a literal piece of another star system just, well, drifting into our cosmic neighborhood, making a quick visit before it heads off again into the, you know, the great beyond. Sounds like sci-fi, right? But um, as of very recently, it's actually happening. It's real. So today, our deep dive is all about this uh, groundbreaking discovery from NASA. We're going to pull apart a recent article from NASA Science, really get into what this amazing celestial visitor is, where it's from, and, well, why its appearance is causing such a buzz. Get ready. This is quite the story. It really is. And what's truly fascinating here from a scientific standpoint is just how rare this is and uh, the significance for ages. You know, our understanding of comets, asteroids, it, it was all limited to stuff born and raised right here in our solar system. Objects that form from the same cloud of gas and dust as our sun, our planets. But this discovery, it just shatters that boundary. We're talking about something completely external, an interstellar wanderer. Genuinely, it gives us this uh, fleeting, really unprecedented chance to sample what matter is like in a totally different stellar nursery. It tells us about how other systems might form, what they're made of. It it really shifts perspectives. A piece of another star system just passing through. Yeah. It's kind of wild. So let's get into the specifics. Where did this story even begin? How did we spot it? Well, the first flag went up very recently, actually, on July 1st. That's when the NASA-funded ATLS Survey Telescope down in Rio Hurtado, Chile, first reported it. ATLS. Right, that's the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. Yeah. Their main job is usually looking for things that might, you know, pose a threat to Earth. Exactly. So it's kind of a wonderful irony, isn't it? The system designed to warn us about potential danger. Instead, it delivers news of this uh, unexpected but incredibly welcome cosmic visitor. And right away, they knew it was different, not just another local comet. Pretty quickly, yes. Mm -hmm. The initial data, the trajectory, its inferred origin, it all screamed interstellar. It wasn't following the usual paths around our sun. It was clearly coming from outside. An alien object in the purest scientific sense from beyond the sun's gravitational pull. And it has a name now. It does. Officially designated 3I Atlas. The I stands for interstellar. And when they first reported it, July 1st, it was already quite far out, about 420 million miles, yeah. uh, 670 million kilometers. Wow, that's a, quite a distance already. Gives you a sense of the scale, the speed. Absolutely. And its journey was far from over at that point. So that trajectory is the key, the dead giveaway that it's interstellar. That's the definitive proof, yes. For 3I Atlas, they traced its arrival direction back to the constellation Sagittarius. That specific origin point immediately told astronomers, okay, this isn't orbiting our sun like our own comets do. It's on what we call a hyperbolic trajectory, basically an open path. Meaning it comes in, swings by the sun once. And then heads straight back out into interstellar space, never to return. It's not gravitationally bound to us, just passing through the neighborhood. Okay, so when does it get closest to the sun? That's expected around October 30th this year. At that point, it'll be about 1.4 astronomical units away from the sun. And an AU is the Earth-Sun distance, roughly 93 million miles. That's right. About 150 million kilometers. So 1.4 AU is, uh, let's see, around 130 million miles or 210 million kilometers, just inside the orbit of Mars, to give you some perspective. Now, you hear comet and close approach, and people might get a little nervous, but we should be clear. Oh, absolutely. The source material is very, very clear on this. 3I8 last poses zero threat to Earth, none whatsoever. It's going to stay well clear of us, at least 1.6 AU away. That's about 150 million miles or 240 million kilometers. So everyone can definitely relax and just enjoy the science. It's a marvel, not a menace. And that straight through path, not an ellipse. That's what makes it truly interstellar, a guest, not a resident. OK, huge relief there. So no danger, yeah. but massive scientific implications. But it makes you wonder, how do they track something moving that fast, that far away, and confirm its origin so quickly? Seems like finding a cosmic needle in a haystack. Well, it's a fantastic example of global astronomy working together, real scientific detective work. ATLS made the first spot, sure. But confirming that interstellar path needed more. It needed uh, pre-discovery observations. Pre-discovery, meaning they looked back in time, sort of. Exactly. They went digging through the archives, huge digital vaults of images taken by other telescopes before July 1st. It's like, you know, finding old photos where someone famous was accidentally in the background years ago. But a uh, cosmic scale with faint, fast objects. That's amazing. So they're hitting rewind on the sky. How far back did they find traces? They managed to push the timeline back to June 14th, almost three weeks before the official discovery. 
These crucial earlier sightings came from the archives of three different ATLA's telescopes worldwide, plus the Zwicky Transient Facility out at Palomar Observatory in California. Wow. And combining those earlier data points with the new ones, that's what let them nail down the trajectory, confirm it was hyperbolic, lock in that interstellar status. It's like getting multiple GPS pings, you know. It lets you map the whole route accurately. And the effort continues. Since the first report, tons of other telescopes have jumped in, adding more observations, refining the picture all the time. That kind of rapid global teamwork is really something else. Okay, so for those of us maybe with access to a decent telescope or just following along, what's the viewing situation? Can we still see it? Yes, for a little while longer. Scientists expect it should stay visible to, well, pretty powerful ground-based telescopes through September, so there's still a window. But as it gets closer to the sun around October, it's going to get lost in the glare from our viewpoint, too close to the sun to observe for a bit. Ah, okay. Hiding behind the sun, basically. Pretty much. But it's expected to pop back out on the other side, becoming visible again by early December, which gives astronomers another crucial window to study it as it heads back out, away from us. Right. That continued observation is key. So beyond just knowing where it is and where it's going, what are scientists actually doing with this information? What are they trying to learn from a visitor from another star system? It raises that big question, doesn't it? Why is digging into its uh, physical properties so vital? Especially thinking about NASA's big goals, exploring the unknown, inspiring people. Precisely. It's not just tracking dots on a screen. It's about figuring out what this thing is. Astronomers everywhere are intensely focused on its size, its physical makeup. They're using tools like spectroscopy, basically, breaking down the light coming from the comet. Like a fingerprint, right? Different elements give off different light signatures. Exactly like a fingerprint. Analyzing that light tells them its chemical composition, what it's made of. They're also looking at its brightness, how it changes to figure out its size, maybe its shape, if it's tumbling or rotating. And why is that so important? What does knowing its ingredients tell us? Think about it. This is a direct sample, a physical piece of material from outside our solar system, delivered right to our doorstep almost. We didn't even have to launch a probe. By studying its makeup, the dust, the ice, the gases, we get clues about the building blocks of other star systems. Is the stuff out there similar to what our own system formed from? Or is it wildly different? Does it hold exotic elements or molecules we haven't seen in our own comets? So we're asking really fundamental questions here, like, is the universe built from the same Lego bricks everywhere? In a sense, yes. They'll look at ratios of things like water ice, carbon monoxide, maybe complex organic molecules. Our comets are like time capsules from our own solar system's birth. Mm. If 3 i Aetlis has a totally different chemical signature, well, that suggests maybe planet formation happens very differently elsewhere. Did it form around a different type of star? Was it exposed to different radiation? Does it have weird isotope ratios pointing to a different cosmic origin? Could it even carry like, precursors to life? Maybe different ones than we find here. That's one of the really exciting possibilities they'll be looking for. It helps answer. Are there common recipes for making planets across the galaxy or is every system unique? This is a brief chance to, metaphorically speaking, touch a piece of another star's creation story. It really pushes our understanding. Wow, just incredible. A piece of another star system carrying who knows what secrets, just cruising through. So bringing this deep dive toward a close, we've really hit on the excitement around 3 ILS, this unique interstellar traveler. And it's not just a quick look. It's this ongoing, fast-paced global science effort, tracking it, analyzing it, trying to decode its message. So what's the big takeaway for us watching this unfold? I think the biggest takeaway is just how vast and varied the universe truly is and how much we still have to learn. You know, given NASA's focus areas, understanding the universe, finding exoplanets, the search for life, something like 3 Alis is gold dust. It's more than a curiosity. It's a real tangible sample from beyond, a hint about what other planetary systems might be like. Studying these objects, however fleetingly they pass by, could tell us if the basic stuff planets are made of is common or if there are completely different ingredients out there. Different cosmic flavors, maybe? Exactly. What are the common building blocks and what are the exotic variations? And as we watch 3i ATS head back out into the void, you're left with this uh, really provocative thought, aren't you? What, what other secrets do these interstellar wanderers hold? about how stars are born, how planets form all across the cosmos. The universe, it seems, keeps finding ways to send us messages. We just need to be ready to read them.